I'm, I have a story. So I remember the time, it was like about six years ago, and I was dating a guy at the time, super sexy, super sexy man, and oh God, that was such a hot relationship. But what he, what the point is, I'm getting sidetracked, sorry, memory lane. The, the point is, is that when him and I were dating, he was really into the whole like, yo, I'm gonna start doing coconut oil everywhere. Can you guys remember when this happened? Do you remember everything? Like all of a sudden hair care products had oil in it. Um, your toothpaste. Um, and then charcoal was a big deal. Then there was charcoal soap. There was charcoal toothpaste. There was charcoal mascara. There was, do you guys remember when this happened? I'm just gonna say it. I think this is exactly what this is. This protein moisture sensitivity thing. Hey guys, what's up? So I made this live yesterday with my followers about protein sensitivity being a myth. Now, the video isn't the cleanest, like most organized topics. I did kind of chop it up a bit. It was originally 45 minutes long and instead of, you know, you spending time watching a long video, I chopped it up to the most important parts. And in the middle and the end, it goes towards, you know, uh, basically what I found with how if you were a first time curly girl or even if you've been in this journey for a few years that this information is going to be overwhelming and not make any sense when you find it online and I explain why that is um, in just a very like loose uh, structure and my biggest point that I want to make with this video is I'm coming at it as somebody if I just was like researching online what did I find and me just talking about it a little bit um, everything has cycles and seasons and the biggest word of advice that I'm going to give you which is towards the end of the video is listen to your gut listen to what your hair is saying and what it needs there is such a thing as protein overload I do want to make that correction now as I noticed that I was getting my words mixed up because I was basically sleep deprived um, but there is such thing as protein overload and I just want to clear that up right now protein overload is for somebody who is constantly using a heavy treatment that is protein treatment which normally you only get if you're a professional um, unless you're going on the black market and getting it from Amazon or any other resources that are basically protein treatments this is mostly for girls who are like really damaged and they're not getting any curl back in their hair because their hair is completely fried from heat damage so I just want to make that clear um, if you don't watch the whole thing that's cool if you want to skip through it that's cool but leave a comment below let me know what you think and I hope you have a great day see you bye Today's live, apparently everybody wants to know about protein versus moisture. So we're going to see what's going on. I think it's going to be a really good topic, really good combo while I'm talking about the research that I've done. Now guys, this is a topic that is so sensitive to the community, what I what I truly believe in is that every, you gotta go with your gut, you gotta listen to yourself, but I will tell you what I found on the internet is just like insane. And I'm gonna explain to you a little bit of what I found. So, a few weeks ago, I made a post about um, a webinar that was online, which I'll refer to in a little bit. I want to talk about um, TF IDF tool. It's a keyword um, tool that can be placed on your Google Chrome, your Safari, whatever it may be. But it's basically um, a branch off of the um, the internet platform. And a lot of what has popped up. Um, the number one keywords that popped up, believe it or not, was Caucasian women searching for um, protein sensitivity, protein versus moisture, and what is all the rage and how to find balance. And I found that really interesting um, because it specifically shows a specific demographic of women are predominantly white. So it makes me wonder 
who is coming up with these topics in the first place. What are the influencers? Who are the bloggers? And um, why are they predominantly Caucasian women? Is pretty much um, the topic that, the, the key words here. And I'm just going off of my research. I'm not going off of what I'm assuming. So these are the top ingredients that are found in, in proteins. We are talking about products that contain protein and those proteins are wheat, soy, hydrolyzed collagen, oat flour, and the term that I keep seeing coming up is overload. The word overloaded, like protein overloaded, are you protein overloaded? And it's just like this, what, they, what I'm finding online and what you guys are popping up on Google is that people want you to do like a strand test or they want you to feel your hair to see if you have protein overload. I don't know about you, but if I was somebody who was new to the curly hair world, I would not know where to start with how to touch my hair or how to define what I'm feeling without the proper information and knowledge around texture and the, uh, an elevated cuticle. So that's the first thing that came to mind while reading this information is that they want you to feel your hair if it's stringy or sticky. And I was thinking in my head, well, stringy to me feels like skinny. Stringy feels like it's something that, like a string would feel like, like a thread. So I'm, so then my mind, if I didn't know anything, my mind would then go to like the diameter of the strand. So is my fine hair stringy? Um, and then the second term was sticky. I wouldn't know what sticky would feel like if I'm feeling my hair has product on it, if I'm feeling that my hair has several different textures throughout the strand, from silky to wiry to bumpy to single strand knots to um, coarse to, you know, skinny like, um, fine textured, I wouldn't know how to define sticky. You know, does it, does sticky feel like Velcro? Does sticky feel like, like sappy? Like, you know, like a, like a sap from a tree? So I'm just trying to think if I was a curly girl on this journey, I would have been like, Okay, so I wouldn't have an idea. So I'm trying to come through the perspective of somebody who is either just starting on this journey or has been on this journey for years and just starting to now get into this lingo. Um, so what they say is protein sensitivity symptoms are when your hair is basically like mushy. It's not really curling and there's a limpness to it. That if I was new and if my hair was limpy, I know, not knowing how to trust my intuition, not knowing how to guide myself to where my hair is going because I don't know where I am to begin with because there's all these new terms coming at me the second I Google anything. There's all these blogs. Um, I would probably think I was protein sensitive because I wouldn't know how to trust my own eyesight of what my hair is doing simply by pulling my hair down and watching it bounce up if I didn't understand what elasticity meant and what my hair is doing from the history that I've already been through in my hair journey. Does that make sense? 
if I had never understood what I've already done to my hair, that I was using detergents and sulfates and silicones that was drying out my hair, of course I'm going to have a lack of elasticity if I don't know where my hair has already been because of ingredients that I'm just now learning about. Okay, are you hearing how this can just keep the hamster wheeling in, in the brain of just being really confused? So bear with me for a minute because I'm, I'm getting to something that's really important, which is this question that I have for you. I want you to touch your hair right now and I, I want a show of hands, a thumbs up or a thumbs down if your hair feels sticky. I, I want you to confidently let me know if your hair feels sticky. What you think the definition of sticky is. Everyone's thumb downing. From everything that I've found online, and I'm, I'm doing this through the as if I was new to the game. I'm not doing this as Meg Curly Hair Alchemist, Curly Hair, whatever you wanna call me, professional, licensed professional. I'm not doing this out of this. I'm doing this out of the perception of a new person who is Googling. When you research, I'm gonna go back to the related keywords. When you research a lot of the keywords that are being used, I'm just jumping on my computer real quick cause you know, I'm human, I don't have like, Gold star memory here. A lot of the keywords that are used that connect to your search are protein hair treatment, protein for hair, protein treatment for curly hair, does my hair need protein quiz? Protein damaged hair? Too much moisture in hair? Protein versus moisture curly hair. I swear to you, I've pressed every single keyword. It's all the same articles. It's bustle.com telling me to do a protein overload quiz. It's naturallycurly.com telling me what protein treatments to use. It's, uh, what else is it? I wrote them down. It's um, naturalclub.com letting, letting me know if I have too much protein or not enough moisture and how the hair feels dry. Literally every single keyword I press, it's the same top websites. Every single time. What that says to me is no matter how you configure your words or strategize your question, if there's moisture or protein involved in your search, those are the websites that get the most traction because of the way that they are monetizing their stuff. Bear with me, you're probably waiting for me to make a bigger point. When I looked up researching about protein and moisture through the science answer, I went to um, my lady's uh, hair textbook that we are taught in hairdressing school, Hairs Biology, which is webmd.com. And then there's also verywellhealth.com, all wrote, uh, written by MDs. And they talk about the hair's function and how the hair is meant to protect you and regulate body heat, so on and so forth. Again, another science-based website. All they talk about is keratin. Not once does it say anything about protein sensitivity. There was a webinar with um, Dr. Susan Walker and Krista Levitt. It came out a few months ago. Do you guys catch it? If you didn't, it's on Earth Tones Naturals Facebook page. It was just so phenomenal. I loved it. I did a post about it. You can actually check it in my feed. It's called uh, Protein Sensitivity is a Myth. So what 
all I'm getting from my searches is, is product advertisements. Olive oil and not olive oil, coconut oil was like the newest thing on the market. It was like the most holistic thing that you could do for yourself. You have a tooth problem, you do oil pulling. You have dry skin, you put um, coconut oil on your skin. You have dry hair, coconut oil on your on your hair. You have a low fat diet, you eat coconut oil. Coconut oil was everywhere. It was such a fad. It was such a big deal. So there was this huge rave of products just being pumped out in this new market happening where all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, I need to start eating coconut oil. I started adding it to my water. I started adding it to my tea. Everyone that I followed, that I looked up to, that were my dietitian gurus, were all like, coconut oil for this, coconut oil for that, look how young I look. And I just remember like after about seven months of eating coconut oil, I started getting fat. Oh my God, what happened to me? And then everyone's like, oh, it's cause you're, you're getting older. And I'm like, no. No, I mean, yes, I'm getting older, but this is not because I'm getting older. Something changed. It took me three months to figure it out. So all in all, 10 months go by, right? And I'm like, holy shit, it's the freaking coconut oil. And I know it's gonna sound so simple. Here's the freaking answer. Ready? It's just, it's about balance. The truth is, we're always gonna have self-doubt in our journey. What's stopping us from really owning our intuitive answer is our self-doubt. We don't know if we're right or wrong. That's totally okay. It's insanely fine. But I first want you to recognize that that, un, that uncertainty, that un, you're unsure, that's where you're at in your journey. What I'm going to tell you is when you start Googling to try to find the answer, you're going to be led to blogs. You're not gonna be led to science. When I go to the doctor, I don't ask the doctor, what did you learn in med school that's gonna make me realize that what you know is exactly what my problem is. They don't know what my problem is right away. They have to run tests. They have to take my blood pressure. They have to ask me questions. If I'm seeing online bloggers are not asking you questions, they are not talking to you directly. They're just talking generally the topic. They are not customizing this topic. Um, there's not a, an approach that's, that's supported by science. Licensing industry is not supporting their research. I can go on a blog today, I can create a blog right now with this video and tell you that everything that you're searching for is monetized and making people money through keywords that pushes you through a funnel that then opens the door to manufactured products. What have you been using in the, six, in the past six months? Write that down. I would look at those labels and look at what ingredients are the first five ingredients. When was the last time you got a haircut? For the, for the curly girls who are new to this process, I want you to know that you're not alone, first and foremost. Second, 
If you're getting overwhelmed, please follow Curly Hair Professionals on Instagram. If you are feeling like you have 12 different products, if you got that much going on, I'm gonna tell you right now, I use the same four products on all of my clients. I use, I have 1600 services a year. I'm not over exaggerating. And I have all my clients using the same stuff. Everybody's happy. The only time when someone isn't happy is when they start doubting themselves and they start giving in to the consumerism and watching the commercials. And then when I ask them, why did you try this product and you got off of what I recommended for you? They always say, I don't know, I just wanted to try it. That's what I'm gonna close it with. Your self-doubt's gonna be there, it's a journey. You're not gonna trust yourself in every single decision that you make, but I absolutely promise you, it is going to all pan out the, the less you think that your hair is sensitive to something that is not a protein treatment.